Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Talk Trends. I'm Dawn, Content and Communications Lead of Line Global Investors. Thank you so much for being with us here today. I'm excited to share yet another conversation with Ong Ailing, our Head of Artificial Intelligence of Investments here at Line Global Investors. Welcome, Ling. Great to have you back. Hi, thanks very much. Very excited to be back. So, Ling, we have done a few podcasts now surrounding the topic of artificial intelligence and machine learning. So, today we want to get a bit more creative with our podcast format. So, okay. we want to jazz things up a bit. We want to do a round of quick fire questions with okay. you. <laughs> okay. So, are you ready? <laughs> as ready as I'm ever going to be. <laughs> okay. So, first question let's push the envelope, right? What okay. is the most decadent use of AI you have seen or heard? Most decadent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Okay, so I recall in 2019, um, Baidu, you know, the big Chinese search engine company, they created what they called an AI-powered cat shelter. I see. So that uses AI to do image recognition of the mm-hmm. animal that approaches it, and they open the, the door flap to allow mm-hmm. that animal, and only cats were allowed in to allow the cat to have um, food and drinks and shelter. Oh, I but see. Then what about, what about- the- Dogs. <laughs> exactly, right? What about I dogs mean, have been natural question. What about dogs or like other animals, right? So no, not allowed in. Okay, so <sighs> interesting, right? So to the point of image recognition, tell us a little bit more about that. How do we, you know, train a model mm-hmm. to recognize images of say cats or dogs? So it's an iterative process that requires thousands, even millions of mm-hmm. images to tell the difference between cats and dogs. Right, I see. Yeah. And in terms of the number of images we need, I mean, today's technology, you so it depends on the level of accuracy you want as well. Whether you want to recognize it as just an animal, you want to recognize it as a cat, or you want to recognize it as my pet, which is a Persian cat, okay, right? A very specific see, kind of cat. Um, okay. So with today's technology, you can start with as little as a few hundred or a few mm-hmm. thousand images. Okay. But when you think back to, you know, as, as recent as like, you know, maybe five, ten years ago mm-hmm. when Google and Baidu first started right. training, yes. they would have required millions. I think Google Brain required 10 million images wow. in order to train the difference between a cat and a dog. So how did Google manage to, you know, accumulate all these images, right, ah. uh, for their AI you know, algorithm behind this recollection. Ah, so that's that's the trick <laughs> okay. question, right? Exactly, because they had they needed like millions and millions of labeled pictures, yeah. right? So remember, whenever you have these uh, websites where you have to prove that you are human, and yes, not a machine, I'm not a robot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a robot, and you have to like slide things, yes, or you have to like yes, click on certain yes. images, tell whether it's a bridge or yes. a crosswalk. Infuriating, infuriating. Waste a lot of time, right? Yeah, even I don't get it right all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe okay. you're, you're I really a don't. <laughs> so um, th- those things are called CAPTCHA. And CAPTCHA stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test. So that was um, originally set up by the Carnegie Mellon University okay. to try and detect spam bots. So yes. make sure that you're Dawn and not a spam bot Dawn. Okay. <laughs> so they, they started this. Then Google realized that actually, you know, you have a whole lot of humans clicking crosswalk, cat, dog, cat, dog. Oh, yeah. So effectively, after that, all that data that yeah. they collect, yeah. it's completely wasted if you don't use it as supervised learning data. Mm. So effectively, when you are telling them that you're not a robot, you are also helping label these data for free for them. I see. They don't have to pay so you're you. helping them to, yes. to, to build their database. Yes. So oh. we were basically the, uh, the human labelers for I them. I see. Okay, so now I understand why we have all this select all squares with traffic lights, walkway, exactly. or bridge. Exactly. Okay, very interesting. This is so relevant to all of us, right? Because we have this all the time when we do Google search. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's move on to the next question maybe. Which area is getting the most investments in AI technology? Um, if I'm not wrong, you would think it's something like elect- electric vehicles, or yes. sorry, autonomous vehicles, yes. right? But if I'm not wrong... Um, last year in 20, 2020, we have the data for 2020, yeah. the area of focus was actually drugs, cancer, and molecular drug discovery. That got mm-hmm. about $14 billion of investment in 2020, um, which exceeded that of autonomous vehicles. Because okay. before that, it was autonomous vehicles. So everyone wants to fly drones okay, and okay. Oh, flying this... taxis, all that kind of stuff. Yes, interesting, right? Because obviously, EV has a lot of, you know, make a lot of headlines in the new space. So, you know, let me tell us a little bit more right, on this, like, why, how did all this money go into, you know, drug discovery? 
Mm, so why did it go into drug discovery? We actually, I suspect, have COVID to thank for right. that. Right. Because COVID right. showed the way of how you can use AI together with uh, artificial mm. networks with genome data to help the scientists mm. rapidly process the data sets and run simulations to predict how the immune system would react to various spike proteins. That's why we were able to create a vaccine in such short time. And it eliminates a lot of the trial and error process that you normally have in um, traditional drug mm. research. So because of that, it sparked a lot of interest. And I think also because of that, there was a lot of investments into COVID vaccines. Hence, that exceeded autonomous vehicle in terms of attracting the most investments. I guess that, that completely makes sense, right? I mean, the pandemic has definitely changed you know, a lot of things. So now for a more a nerdy and scholarly question, okay. <laughs> which country publishes the most research on AI? I think, I guess it's still the US, although... If I'm not wrong, China is a very close second. Mm -hmm. So I recall reading that US it had published about 150,000 papers in 2021, and China was a very close second with 130 something thousand papers, wow. right? And their growth rate is much, much higher than right. the US. Um, you know, as yeah, we can it's, imagine. It's, yes, <laughs> this being China, you know, they're, they're not. <laughs> you know, it's like, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So a related question to that, right? Maybe a bit on career choices. Uh, um, could be a bit late for me to pivot now, but for me, <laughs> a bit late. but should no say not me. Maybe should our kids? Well, because you have children yourself. So should do you want your kids to study AI, data science, computer science? You know, is that the thing to be in the next ten to twenty years? Yes. So actually, it, it is a bit. It is a bit. Uh, it is a bit of a regret, right? Because remember, in one of the last episodes, I told you my dad asked me to study computer science, yes. and I didn't. Yeah, yeah. But it's okay. I I picked up computer science outside after university yeah. anyway. And you so, did law first. Yes, <laughs> you did law exactly. First. So when it comes to my kids, I think I would still encourage them, maybe not pure computer science, mm -hmm. but artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and machine learning, data science, because we're so lacking talent. So interestingly, you asked earlier, um, you know, which country published the most papers, right? So Singapore, obviously, because of our scarcity and humans, we're not one of the top in terms of absolute number of papers, but in terms of number of papers published per capita, so per human we have, right. we are one of the top We're five. We're up there. We're up there in the rankings. <laughs> Majula, Singapore. Yeah. So and, and Singapore, the demand for um the demand for AI, machine learning skill sets is very high. So um I read a thing on AI talent. So there was a research on AI talent. In 2020, about two and a half percent of all job posting required a need for AI skills. So we this is much higher than say in the US where it was less than one percent or even in the UK or Australia. I think Australia was only half a percent of the post. So increasingly, um, a higher and higher percentage of our job requirements are um, requiring AI skill sets. Okay. So if you want to interview for my team, you need to have no, AI skill sets Which as is well. great, right? It's exactly <laughs> what you're doing. You're building a team here at Lion, doing AI, uh, developing homegrown talent. So guys, you're accepting CVs now. <laughs> yes, anyone who does AI in finance, quant finance, come send please. Send it to us. We send are desperately <laughs> trying to hire over here. Oh, we're sending And you know, us. we're struggling to find good, uh, good, uh, good candidates. Yeah. yeah. And Link's a good boss. So... That's a trick. Okay, so we're going to end this uh, podcast with a more technical question, right? shall we? Um, is there natural language uh, processing for all languages? Um, I don't think it's all because they're over like seven, more than 7,000 recognized languages globally. And most NLP today are focused on the seven key languages that are widely spoken by most humans, mm -hmm. which is obviously English, Chinese, mm -hmm. and an interesting uh, French, Spanish, and an interestingly Urdu, Farsi, and Arabic. Interesting. Yeah, so th th those are the top seven languages. And uh, if we use Google Translate as a proxy, currently they support around 133 languages, wow. and they do OCR, which is opt optical character recognition, for about 37 languages, and they support... Uh, audio and augmented reality for about 32 languages. So, no, we're nowhere near the 7,000, but I think I'd struggle to find a single human that says, you know, I don't understand what Google Translate says. Exactly. Most people do. Right. Yeah, the speak. machines, power of machines here for us. Well, thanks so much for being with us here, Ling. Always very insightful and very engaging to have you on the show. Appreciate your thoughts. 
So here we are at the end of the episode. Uh, you have been listening to Let's Talk Trends with me, Don Leung. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to our show on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. Catch you guys next time.